إن الإسلام بدأ غريبا وسيعود غريبا كما بدأ فطوبى للغرباء حتى إذا أتوا على واد النمل قالت نملة قالت نملة يا أيها النمل ادخلوا مساكنكم لا يحطمنكم سليمان وجنوده وهم لا يشعرون فتبسم طاحكا من قولها وقال رب أوزعني أن أشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علي وعلى والدي وعلى والدي وأن أعمل صالحا ترضى وأدخلني برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين وتفقد الطير فقال ما لي لا أرى الهدهد أم كان من الغائبين لأعذبنه عذابا شديدا أو لأذبحنه أو لأذبحنه أو ليأتيني بسلطان مبين فمكث غير بعيد فقال أحدت بما لم تحط به وجئتك من سبأ بنبأ يقين إني وجدت امرأة تملكهم وأوتيت من كل شيء ولها عرش عظيم وجدتها وقومها يسجدون للشمس من دون الله وزين لهم الشيطان أعمالهم فصدهم عن السبيل فهم لا يهتدون Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's the end of the story of Medina. That was a beautiful story, it's indeed. A, yeah. You painted a lot of pictures for me that I, I had no idea of. Yeah, I loved it. Alhamdulillah. You know, this is an hour and 42. Wow. It's going to be a little bit of editing, but it's going to be a long episode. Is, so hopefully, hopefully you guys will be able to actually go through it. This is our but, high score record. Longest episode, huh? Yeah. Yo, Medina, Medina deserved more time than this too. Facts. I didn't even get to everything, but... I got to, um, I'll say the main points, alhamdulillah. Once you guys listen to the episode, I want you guys to imagine it as if it was you who was there in Medina. And, you know, I hope this story inspires you guys to go. Mm -hmm. And if you've been there already, I hope it inspires you to go again. And, yeah. So I hope you guys enjoy. See you guys on the other side. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to episode, I lost track, bro. Yeah. Because you said six and then six A, six B, and yeah. then you changed it to seven last second <laughs> without <laughs> consulting with me. <laughs> That's the thing. It looks weird on YouTube. Yeah. 6A, okay. Yo. So, episode eight? I think so. We're eight episodes in, bro. Eight episodes. Bro. Wow. That's look at us. A sick a lot. Consistent. I like it. All right. Episode eight of the Changes Podcast, where we talk about our experiences as Muslims living in the West. You know what they say, I mean? Glad tidings to the strangers. Glad tidings to the strangers. All right, so we got a lot to unpack this episode because what we're doing part, is it part two or part 2.5, three? It's just going to be one episode for Medina. One just episode. Keep, keep it at one. Yeah, bro, I actually want, I want to know about Medina because a lot I want to go there, bro. Yeah, Medina, Even bro. Even as a kid, that was like my dream place. Yeah, yeah. Well, like Medina, bro, is the greatest city. Really? Allah, it's the greatest city. I'm stamping it. <laughs> okay, in terms of what though? In terms of everything. Everything? Everything, bro. Oh, wow. Lifestyle. Okay. The the Islamic environment. Yeah. What you're surrounded by, the people, the food. The food? Bro, it has everything. It has really? Everything. <laughs> so it's not like eye candy on, on social media. It actually is like that? It's actually nice, Salah. Wow. The only thing, if I could change one thing about Medina, okay. it's the bugs, bro. Oh, you seen yeah. that one video I sent you? Yeah, that's a log <laughs> off, bro. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. When I was there, it wasn't that bad. But man, that video, the amount of locusts that you see on the ground. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't do too well with bugs. But you know, yeah. apparently, you know, fun fact, mm -hmm. locusts are the only bugs we're allowed to eat. <laughs> That's crazy that you know that fact, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Weird. How'd but you find that out? I'm pretty sure, like, I'm pretty sure either I, I, I researched it 
No, not that I looked for it on research. I'm not out here researching what bugs can I eat, you know? That's crazy. <laughs> That's not what I'm researching. But I think it just came across that information. And I don't know, maybe someone can fact check me on it. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. You're, you're a different type of kid, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> the only bugs we're allowed to eat. So okay, okay. We, maybe we're maybe gonna have to, we're gonna have to see a delete for that. Yeah, somebody gonna have to we're fact check see. me. Well, I don't wanna I don't wanna give a false information out here having people eating bugs out here. <laughs> yeah, go to Medina, it's all you God want. nah, it's a feast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. oh man, no, but I don't do bugs. I'm not I don't do too well with bugs, bro. So that might be like a huge turn off for me. I don't know about you, but you know it's funny. Uh one time I I I was going for fidget and I was a little bit late. And then I wanted to go upstairs because I'm like, you know what? The roof looks nice. Mm-hmm. Well, as I'm going up, I'm just seeing more and more bugs. Like it, it, it gets like it more gets worse. the more you rise. You go. Yeah, I'm saying on the first <laughs> the, floor. The worse it gets, bro. Imagine everyone, everyone's going up and well, I just start going down. <laughs> oh, man. That's not. How do you get used to that? I don't know. I don't know. I bro, I'll be watching my every step. First of all, I can't step on a bug. I think yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll gag, bro. Like, I, I can't Allah, step you on know, You know the trick is? You just keep your head up. Oh, nah. <laughs> you just keep One of those ignorance is bliss moments, huh? Yeah, nah, yeah, I can't yeah. do that. I think you have to slide your feet. So at least you're not like crushing it, but like you're kind of moving it. <laughs> you're going to see me walking like this every time. <laughs> nah, man. Can't do that. Just make sure you have your socks, bro. Otherwise yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna I'm wearing a hazmat suit. I told you. <laughs> I'm, wearing, <laughs> I'm wearing a hazmat I don't care how hot it is out there. Like I see- said, bro, just, just, just make sure you don't break your wudu. Yeah, that. yeah, I gotta keep my wudu all day. Facts. Well, other than that, bro, like the everything else about it, bro, the peace, the sakina that you feel in Medina, unmatched. Allah, wow. unmatched. So you don't feel that anywhere else, huh? Makkah didn't give you that. Yeah, Makkah. Well, you know, I have to, I have to give Makkah a second chance as well. Okay. The thing is, Makkah was amazing. Mm-hmm. It was very nice, but at the same time, I was there during Ramadan, right? Mm-hmm. And then imagine I get to Medina, it's a Eid. So naturally you're more, you're more relaxed and it's more of like a kick up, mm. you know, a couple of days. Whereas Makkah, you're, you're fasting, you're grinding. So it's a different type of vibe, you know? Yeah, I feel you. So maybe outside of Ramadan, I'll see how it is in Makkah. But Makkah, it was more like, like you kind of felt that rough environment. Whereas Medina, like, Allah, bro, the minute I got, uh, I got off that fast train, Bro, it's just the air was different. Really, <laughs> the air was okay, different. Weather, weather wise, like is it the same? Weather wise, it's almost. I think it's a little bit cooler than Mecca. Yeah, it's still very hot. Yeah, but I don't know. The days I was there was pretty cool. Uh, what would you compare it to, like in, our, in terms of our type of weather? Plus twenty five. No, 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 no. no. Still it's, it's still like thirty five. Damn, it's still plus thirty five. And, like, and it gets hotter in Mecca. Mecca is harder. Oh, Mecca man. is like closer to 40. Did you get used to it? Nah, there's no getting used to it. Really? Allah is no getting used to it. The, the nice thing about Medina, once you're in the, like near like the AC Masjid area, stuff? not only the AC, did you see those, um, those umbrellas that have like the shade? Oh, yeah. So it kind of like open up. Yeah. I never actually saw it closed. That probably means like it's too hot. You know? It has to stay open the whole so time. So it has to be open? So right. when you're under it, there's shade. Okay. And then they have like these, uh, it's sick. They have these fans that, like there's like water that's like spraying and then the fan is like oh, pushing it. So okay. as you're walking by, you kind of feel refreshing, it. huh? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's nice. It's nice. As long as they can accommodate, then you know it's not that bad. Yeah. But just just overall, bro. Oh yeah, one thing, bro. That that, that fast train from Mecca to Medina, well, like amazing, amazing. Like there's like a fast train because normally you can uh, normally if you go from Mecca to Medina, a lot of people they take like whatever cars, buses. So that takes like four hours. Bumpy almost road? Five. It's like a bumpy road? I don't know, because I never took it. Okay. But I took the train. And the train was two hours, mm-hmm. smooth. And like the seats are nice. There's a cafeteria. Wow. A lot of sick. It's sick. Okay, so they're living it up out there, huh? Yeah, for me, I don't know. I don't want to take the bus. I was feeling a little bougie. Okay. So I'm like, you know, let me, let me ride on the train. How's the currency there? Is it like, you know, things are more expensive out there? or From Medina to Mecca or are you just talking about? In general, like when you're out there. Uh, it's not. It's not that expensive. Okay. It's not that expensive. It's not like super cheap, like Turkey. You know Egypt. exactly. Like, like I'm not gonna lie. When I feel like there's, it is a little bit of expensive. It feels yeah. more like authentic to me. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. there's, when, it's more, it's more expensive for sure than mm-hmm. those places. And I actually noticed that Medina is a little bit more pricey than Mecca. 
Okay. So everything that you buy, like let's say I buy this stove, yeah. or let's say if I buy it for five dollars in Medina, it'll probably be like seven. Mm. The same exact stove. Wow. So everything's a little bit more, I'll say, in Medina compared to Mecca. Mm-hmm. That's why, like Mecca, you feel like it's more like Check class it. space, and yeah. it's like it's it's um like everyone's a businessman mm-hmm. in Mecca. Whereas Medina, if you're like, oh yeah, I'm not buying this, you try you try that. I don't uh, mind. I'm I'm walking away thing. Doesn't always work. Yeah, in Turkey that worked out <laughs> a lot. Work. It worked a lot. Okay, you know what? I'm I'm leaving. Wait, Wait come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was nice, man. So you when you finished Ramadan in Mecca, how was it? Like the transfer to Medina, like how was the coming into it? So I uh, I went with Abdul Shakur mm-hmm. from Mecca to Medina, and I got on the train around Maghrib time. Yeah. So um, when we left. Mecca around Maghrib time we got to Medina I want to say around like 9 p.m. so I, I, I came into Medina at night time and wallahi bro it was like the minute the minute I walked out of that train station bro the air was just nice because it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't as hot as well, you mean like humidity as, wise or bro it just felt like a, a nice I know what you mean a nice you know 18 degrees yeah but it probably was like 25 yeah but I got used to the, the yeah. 40 so 25 well I just felt nice mm-hmm. and honestly well bro it just felt like I was in the city of the prophet wow. from jump like it just I'm I have a video and I'm just like yo the air in Medina is different and mm-hmm. you can you can feel it like the minute you get there mm-hmm. so Ramadan was done so I came basically on the night of the Eid Okay. Thing is, they pray, they pray Eid Salah right after Fajr. And mm-hmm. Fajr is at like 4.30. So for us, there was no point for us to go to sleep, basically. Yeah. So we kind of just stayed up. We we're just chilling. We made our way to Masjid al Nabwi and we got there at like 3 a.m. Okay. The crazy part was, imagine like the Eid prayer is at like 6. But we go, even though we got there at 3 a.m., it was so full that we had to pray a little bit outside. And that's, that's the crazy part because... For us, normally, eight day, like you go a little bit early, but you're not going like 3 a.m. Yeah. Like 3 a.m. is... I is, barely make it to the 8 a.m. <laughs> you barely make it to the 10 a.m., you know? <laughs> but imagine, so we get there at 3 a.m. And so I didn't really get to experience the masjid yet because I'm outside of it. Yeah. We found a spot to sit down and we're just waiting for Fajr at that point. Mm-hmm. And one thing, I'm not, I'm not too familiar with the imams in Medina, but one thing my brother told me was the main difference that he would notice was that in Mecca, it was more about like unique voices. So you have like Sudeis, mm-hmm. you have Mahir, you have Dosiri, guys that like have like their unique style of recitation. Yeah. Whereas in Medina, it was more like- They all um, the same? They don't all sound the same, but they all focus on the Tajweed. Oh, so like when you listen to the, to the reciters, like you feel like they're reciting it properly, like perfectly. Oh, wow. And they're giving the, the, the words of the Quran as haq. Mm-hmm. So I remember I showed you that video of- uh, uh, the, the son of Hudayfi, Ahmed mm-hmm. Hudayfi, he was the one who was leading the first Fajr yeah. uh, on the night of Eid. Actually, bro, I want you, I want you to play that one part. Remember I showed you the the Fabiya Allah Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he read, he read Surah Ar Rahman, and that Fajr prayer lasted eighteen minutes. That's wow, crazy! But uh, nine minutes had, the first rakat, nine minutes the second rakat, around how much? Yeah, yeah, bro. Imagine eighteen minutes for two rakats. Wow. And now here, the prayers are super quick. You know? Imagine that. <laughs> okay, you, that's just Fajr prayer. Yeah. yeah. You, let, me see your, let me see your phone real quick. I'm going to show you um, the clip. I want to I wanna actually play it, so we've got to just find it here. Because the thing is, the reciters, most of them, they have like deep voices, right? Yeah. And Allah, bro, the way he did, the way he read that, that, that verse, mm-hmm. got to find it. Got to find it. That was fire, though. So he navigated his voice. Yeah, have it here. Hopefully they'll be able to hear it. Yeah, hundred. What the? Let me find. Let me find that part. Yeah. 
صلصال كالفخار وخلق الجن من مارج من نار فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان الله برو the way because the thing is like me when i recite my natural voice is a little bit deeper a little, yeah lower but I, sometimes i go a little bit higher and a little bit lower but mm-hmm. the way he mm-hmm. read that for me it's hard to like navigate that. while you're reading low going low and he he kept you can't go lower lower yeah. lower, lower. cuz when you start high it's easy to go low but yeah. you heard how like the recitation is yeah. like the, the focus on the tajweed yeah i noticed i noticed how like he was really emphasizing like the actual words of the quran yeah yeah well, that was my the first prayer i prayed in medina it was like, so, what is this man. huh uh, it was bro it was amazing it was nice. it was just beautiful no and then after that as soon as the prayer ended we started um doing the takbirat for Eid so we said mm-hmm. Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar so the Eid prayer was about was at sunrise so a little bit after sunrise we prayed the Eid prayer it was a different type of Eid because like I spent that with my brother you know like most of the Eids it's was always with families. a big, big family and it was just yeah. me and the younger bro so Allah it was beautiful it was nice I got to you know we have now we have that moment that we could share together you know yeah. we spent most of the Ramadan together and we had that Eid in Medina in mm-hmm. the Prophet city sallallahu alaihi wasallam just enjoying it and so now a little bit after that we just went back home and bro that 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 Eid nap was different cuz <laughs> i told you we didn't sleep right yeah wallahi <laughs> you know it's funny every single Eid i tell myself i'm going to get a good rest good there's night's no, sleep there's no sleeping there's no the sleep. night before Eid but that midday nap is the greatest nap of all year Yeah yeah we had we had a breakfast buffet at like 8 I want to say like 7 8 a.m. just you two me him and no we linked up with some of the guys from Edmonton oh, so wow. Mustafa Ali and them guys were there nice. so we we ate a buffet with them and then after that we all just went our separate ways and bro I knocked out I want to say bro when did I wake up I mean, it was not a nap. It was it was a deep sleep yeah <laughs> well, that's what that that, that was like the aftermath of all of Ramadan you know mm-hmm. and we also were traveling from Mecca to Medina so it was it's a little bit of a grind so once we got up we went to this food spot near the 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 jam I knew the university mm-hmm. and there's a spot where like they get um it's kind of like it's a sabaid with chicken but it's like yemeni oh, food nice and bro the thing is the price was so cheap i was expecting the food to not be not be hitting like that yeah. but bro the food is amazing wow. amazing it was like a sabaid with like chicken in it anything was a buy i love amazing a lot amazing all i want think about the the so i want to check out the jamia the university with with abdul shukur and mm-hmm. i'm not gonna lie it looks nice really they have a nice university like what do they have inside it so there's like um baqala which is like uh like imagine like a 7-11 or a circle k yeah right outside of like their their apartments That's so, so there's clutch. a spot that anytime they need like a drink or snacks or whatever you just, you just go So right beside it there's a ball court and there's a soccer court. Mm-hmm. All the brothers are always hooping, playing mm-hmm. soccer. So this is different out there. Bro, I'm not going to lie. I didn't expect like Medina to have hoopers, but there's some some decent hoopers there. Nice. I'm not gonna lie, there's decent hoopers. But you know they they saw what it was like when uh guys from Edmonton pulled up. Okay. We have we have a little bit we have a little bit of a reputation yeah. now. <laughs> oh, wow. But the way so you guys are winning. Basically. Bro, it was, it was You were winning a lot. I'm not gonna lie. You know, it's so funny when I was at Turkey. Yeah, they they weren't bad, but they they didn't really understand three pointers out there. Yeah, like I was shooting these because that's all I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they were so shocked. You know, it's so funny. They kept calling me James Harden. <laughs> <laughs> James Harden. I don't know where they got the correlation, but I think that's all they know or something. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's different. crazy. <laughs> no, when we were there, we we're playing with. Um, some guys i think they were playing on the medina basketball team i didn't even know they had a basketball team oh wow so there's there's some solid guys um there's this this one brother uh there's this one older head he's like an african american dude and then so i ended up when we were hooping i didn't know it was going to be serious ball yeah okay? so me I, obviously i didn't i didn't go to umrah with ball kicks yeah i went there with crocs oh wow so i come in with the crocs and these guys are like and everyone has like actual ball kicks like yeah tie shoelaces and everything and at the beginning one of the guys was like he didn't want to pick me up right he's like yo i want someone serious 
Oh, wow. And then I was like, when did I ever uh, hear that? That's crazy. <laughs> He's like, yeah, no, I, I, want, I want someone serious, bro. You're not serious. You're playing with Crocs. I'm like, yeah, I didn't know what the competition was like, you know? And then, um, so eventually we made our own team, like the Edmonton guys. And bro, like, so we, I was just in the corner because I was wearing Crocs. I was, I was really trying to do too much. Bro, these guys are driving in, kick out, boom. Trey ball. Nice. Threes. Threes. And then this... this. Please tell me that guy regret it, bro. I love those, yo, those the, stories where, you know, you end up regretting... The thing was, the guy was low-key, was low-key hating, you know? Oh, okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> was low-key hating. But, um, you know, you know what was making it worse? The thing was, there was like a timer. You know when we played ball, YY uh, runs? Mm -hmm. It was like a nine-minute timer. I think we are playing like 10-minute timer. Mm -hmm. The thing was, every game was taking a long but once we got on the court, the game was ending in like three, four minutes. Wow. <laughs> and then the problem was that one African-American brother was, was low-key instigating, you know? Because he's like, yo, these guys are winning in three, four minutes. No. <laughs> so, so, so these guys started it's to always get... always that one guy. Always that one guy on the court. But the thing was, he was just kind of hyping us up. But and it was getting them cheesed, huh? And then the thing is, no matter where you are, I noticed, like basketball always gets competitive, you yeah. know? No matter if you're in Medina. Mm -hmm. I was expecting it to be a little bit more calm, but at the, at the end of the day, ball is ball, you know? Ball is ball. It brings the worst out of people. Mm -hmm. And then this guy was like, I was, I was shooting threes, and he's like, yo, he's killing him in Crocs. No. <laughs> the guy was just commentating. Yeah. He went instigating, man. Yeah, but well, it, was, it was nice. There's actually some nice hoopers there, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and most of the brothers there, all the guys we met there are solid guys, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we made a name for Edmonton Hoopers out Proud there, of you guys, know? man. Proud <laughs> of you guys. Put on for him. For Edmonton people, yeah, yeah, but well, like, overall, like the Jamia is just nice. It's just vibes, um, and it's it's all men. They have like a couple uh, uh, massages even within the area. Wow, so like it's it's, it's beautiful. They have. Would nice, you say like that nice was your spot. like most like memorable moment there? Or? No, 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 far from it, far wow. from it. But the Jamia was it was nice to see it. You know, how so, long were you there for again? I was only in Medina for. I think six days, bro. Oh wow! I wish I was there for like two, three weeks. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Though. Six days is is long. Six days, bro. I felt like just how fast it just you were like enjoying it. Flew it. by, you know. Yeah, it flew by. Mm -hmm. I I actually wish I could stay there for a whole month. With like wow. no, like with no rush, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no Medina. I like the the Jamia was beautiful, and where it's located is nice too. Like it's like all of Mecca and Medina. Is surrounded by like nice mountains. Mm -hmm. The scenery is beautiful, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, like shout out to the, the brothers that are studying there. You know, like there's a lot that goes into being a student of knowledge. And, you know, I pray that Allah makes it easy for all of them. And because Allah is, it's, it's kind of uh, I don't want to say like it's glorified, but like you know, everyone says like, oh, I wish I could go to Medina, I wish I could go study in Medina. But it's one thing to actually go there and be in Medina and enjoy Medina, but mm -hmm. at the same time, it's work. Like being a student of knowledge is work. Yeah, it's tough. It's, it's it's a level that it requires dedication and it requires sacrifice, memorizing, all of that. So like people that are there most of the times are going there for a minimum six years. That's crazy. Because they're going for a two year out of the program mm -hmm. and then four years of whatever they choose to as a specialization. So Six years is not is not a small amount of years mm -hmm. to give up, you know, for the sake of Allah. I pray that Allah makes it easy for all of them. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, they find a way to benefit the ummah. One thing I, I find so, like, like I'm, I'm amazed with yeah. are people that are students of knowledge and they debate with, like, people that are outside their religion. They show that they're dedicated, you know, to their knowledge more than people outside their religion. Yeah. I love listening to debates. Because I don't have the knowledge that they do, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. So when I'm watching debates of like a Muslim and a non-Muslim or whatever, and I see them countering their arguments in like such like eloquent ways, I find it so amazing. Like, it goes to show that they actually know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, like us, like obviously, like we have knowledge, right? Where we know right from wrong, we know this and that. Mm -hmm. But you need proof and facts, and you need like a lot of like you need to know their religion to yeah. be able to counter their religion, right? So they study not only our religion, but like their own religion. Like the people obviously they're mm -hmm. going at it, debating with, yeah. studying their religion as well and showing them, this is what you guys have. Let me show you the counter to it, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I find that amazing, mashallah. Yeah, giving da'wah is, is challenging, you know, especially to non-Muslims. 
Mm-hmm. You know, the ones that are that are able to debate with them with wisdom, mm-hmm. not just you know to win the yeah, debate, yeah. But in order to like make the person see the truth, mm-hmm. because I half the those guys half of giving that is obviously like giving the knowledge verbally, but yeah. you also kind of actions speak louder than words, right? You gotta also like carry your part, you know. Don't because I your do character, see character. Your character itself is exactly because I, I do see some debates and like yeah, they're winning the debate. But like they're kind of like trashing on their opponents, right? And yeah. like smack talking. Obviously, that's like that's also like counterproductive to your dawah, you know? Yeah. yeah so yeah. Uh, that part of it, it like, could be fixed, but there's hikmah and, and there's a way to go about dawah. Yeah. You know, especially if you have the right intentions mm-hmm. and you're trying to bring the person to Islam. There's a manner in which you speak. You yeah. know? This is gross, bro. <laughs> Why are you keep drinking it? Then? I don't want to waste it. <laughs> this is gross. Bro, you gotta send a message to KSI. At this point, you're you're advertising for him. I don't mm. know if you're dissing it or if you're showing them like, yo, this is nasty. You keep taking a sip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not it. Let's continue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, Shaq Abdul Razak Badr, Allah, he was saying that there's a certain manner in which the surah of knowledge has to be. Mm-hmm. So like for example, you don't eat in the presence of your teacher. Wow. You don't stand in the presence of your teacher. You don't get out in the middle of the class, except if it's like a crazy emergency, you mm-hmm. know? And, and you know, some, some of the teachers, I heard they, they call people out. So, like, if they see that, like, you know, you're looking that way, like, Sheikh, the dars is here. Mm-hmm. So the reason why there's a certain adab and manners that you have to have as a student of knowledge, the respect that you have for the ilm, the knowledge. Yeah. Because that knowledge that the Shaykh has is knowledge that came from the Prophet ﷺ and knowledge of Islam that ultimately came from Allah. Mm-hmm. So the respect that you're showing is not necessarily for the Shaykh, but for that knowledge because mm-hmm. that knowledge is so great. Mm-hmm. La ilaha illallah is so great. Mm-hmm. The message of Islam is so great. By you acting respectfully and following these manners of a student of knowledge, you're showing respect for the knowledge. And, mm-hmm. bro, and that's before even memorizing and learning just the etiquette. actual knowledge just the etiquette it's, is it, a big big part of it it's beautiful because in the deen it highlights like the utmost respect you have for uh any level of teacher like above you right mm-hmm. because you're one you're showing humility because yeah. you're in a position of you know have wanting something that they have and which is the knowledge right mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. you have no room for arrogance or even yeah. shyness when when you're trying to gain knowledge from mm-hmm. from them right I feel like nowadays, and like obviously in the Western culture, a lot of people don't respect their, you know, their teachers or the professors. Teachers, people that have knowledge, yeah, it's 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 a sad time, a lie. It's mm-hmm. it's sad because those people, because now nowadays, the problem is the people that have knowledge, people are not looking to the people that have knowledge. Instead, they're the people that are put on a pedestal are people that actually don't have much knowledge. It's just the influence they have. It's the influence mm-hmm. and the fame that they have. And it's scary because there's going to be a point in time where, you know, the one who's telling the truth will be seen as a liar. Yeah. The liar is going to be seen as someone who's truthful. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be a point in time where it's going to be difficult. One of the signs of the last hour is that knowledge is going to disappear. Yeah. And slowly, you know, the scholars are, you know, there's a lot of scholars that are getting older. Do we have enough people to carry it on. To carry it on mm-hmm. and, and to pass it on. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, the part that's low-key scary, like I was talking about this with um, Alam, that, you know, the whole thing with like AI? Yeah. Because now the scary part is you can make a voice say something. That's so You know how scary, scary that is when it comes to like- Yeah, I like heard you need like- knowledge. You need like a good amount of footage, like scanned. Like yeah. they have to see you, your facial expression on multiple different occasions mm-hmm. and like your voice, the tone of voice on multiple different occasions, multiple different occasions. Yeah. And then it can make you say anything. Bro, the That's minute, scary, the minute I heard Kanye West singing- uh, <laughs> Nishid? <laughs> Kanye and Drake, bro. Yeah, it's taking it's, over, bro. Well, I has to the point where- I heard them reciting Quran. It was yeah. crazy. And you know what's crazy? You can't really like seek legal action against that because mm-hmm. it's who are you going to seek legal action against? Yeah, like, everyone's yeah. doing it, you know? But look, you, you know, can't the, sue the whole world. The scary part about that is in terms of like Islamic knowledge, okay, let's not talk about like putting everything else to the side, talking yeah. specifically about Islamic knowledge. 
now there's a lot of we have so much videos on YouTube. We have so much audio recordings mm -hmm. of ulama and scholars from the past, like you know, I want to say whatever, fifty, sixty years. If you saw a video of something happening. You can be like, okay, this happened. Or if you heard an audio recording, you're like, okay, I recognize that person's voice. Ibn Uthaymi's voice. Mm -hmm. I, I recognize Sheikh Albani's voice. But now it's going to get to the point where it's like, you can make scholars that have passed away or that are still alive say something that they never said. Mm -hmm. And you're like, boom, this is the proof. Sheikh Albani yeah, said this, actually. Yeah, that's so terrifying. So now knowledge is. You don't know what to believe in anymore. Yeah. So maybe that's where. That sign of the last day that Yeah, I didn't really take that in. You, you know, you don't you won't know everyone's gonna be paranoid. What is true. Yeah. Knowledge is gonna be lost. So not and then we're gonna revert back to the books. Mm -hmm. Cause now the only thing that's gonna make sense is the book. The only thing that you're gonna have full authentic proof on is a book that a Sheikh wrote. And what if people start getting rid of those? If you get rid of the books, or if you don't have people that know how to read the books, mm -hmm. people that haven't studied the language, the, the Arabic language, yeah. or people that don't study under the scholars mm -hmm. so now it's going to go back to knowledge the only way that someone's going to be able to validate their knowledge is to sit at the feet of the scholars wow i know that's that's going to be extremely difficult at a point where now we're all so reliant on like youtube, YouTube. And, and other people doing the work yeah for you us. need to start looking for those videos like and look at the date you know eight years yeah. ago okay we're good you know mm -hmm. but even then those but even then, that, that stuff can get yeah, yeah. Bro, it's, it's a scary time of a lot. Wow, I mean, you just unlocked a new fear. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually scary. That's it's scary. scary. <laughs> but bro, I, I lost my train of thought. I don't even know what we're talking about. Medina, bro. I have to go back to Medina. Go back to Medina. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's ask. Um, Wait, go, go, go before that, before that. Um, yeah, I was talking about Sheikh uh, Abdul Razak Badr. So one beautiful, beautiful thing about Medina is you can literally go to the Prophet's Masjid and you're going to see big time scholars giving lectures like no weekly. No way. Well, you come after Fajr and then there's Riyadh al-Salihin by, by a big sheikh. And then Suleiman Ruheli is going to do a, a fiqh course. Mm -hmm. Well, you know how crazy that is to have those Was scholars? It packed? It's always packed. It's always were, packed. were you able to at least see them? Like, I, was, I wasn't able to attend any because it was the week right after Ramadan. So I think that week was off. Yeah, there's there's so many scholars that you can set at their feet. Like so much uh, big scholars, literally, and they can go and and listen to it at any point in time. Bro, you're really liking that prime, aren't you? <laughs> bro, at this point, at this point, just make it an advertisement for him, bro. Please take a step, please, this please. Is, can I give it a try? <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> It's nasty, isn't it? That's a crazy aftertaste. Like yeah. the, initial, the initial taste is not yeah, bad. I told, yeah, the initial taste, I like it. And then mm. it just goes south. Yeah, Ooh. now we're doing free advertisement, bro. KSI owes us. <laughs> buy Prime. <laughs> don't buy Prime. Don't yeah. buy Prime. <laughs> but um, going back to, uh, yeah, just having those scholars at any time. Imagine, imagine you have a question. Obviously, some of the scholars, they're, they're very busy and you won't really get the chance to ask them anything. Mm -hmm. But imagine like you catch them just walking that's, and that's you have so a question cool. you want to ask them. You yeah. can just be like, Sheikh. And you know this is someone that has so much knowledge. What would I ask? Oh man, if I could ask one question yeah. to someone of not. Yeah, I'm and sure. And like, haram. <laughs> <laughs> that's I'm playing. I'm playing. But yeah, well, I just... It's, it's just a luxury to have, you know? Mm -hmm. There's so much people that have studied and devoted their lives to Islam to be able to reach out to them. <laughs> Sorry, you know? I just thought <laughs> <laughs> I have my question. What is it? <laughs> Are you allowed to eat locusts as a bug? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry Continue Bro, Shab's gonna look at you and just, Yeah he'll give me a weird look He's gonna judge you hard mm -hmm. My but, bad Continue I Completely cut you off Yeah yeah But no That's all I was saying Like there's a lot of um, No the knowledge out there Is Is at your doorsteps Yeah Like you You can It's easy access The only thing is You need to know Arabic of course mm. Yeah, I just say like, we're, we're like oh, 40 minutes in. You didn't even tell me about like the masjid inside. You didn't <laughs> tell me, like, you didn't even tell me your story, like, yeah. of, of Mount Ahad. 
Bro, that's crazy. I I just all I was just rambling at this yeah, point. Yeah, bro. <laughs> bro, that's why like I'm honestly talking about it, talking about Medina, the whole experience, bro. It's, mm-hmm. it's hard to like put it all in one episode. Honestly, I'm, I'm experiencing. I mean, honestly, I'm enjoying like this version of it. Like I'm a- yeah. you're answering the little questions that I want answered. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I had the first time I went inside like actual Mr. the Nabui. I'm sure you you've seen pictures and stuff, bro. Yeah, it's like the most. The most beautiful, beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Thing is, it's it's like borderline. Like I don't know how I feel about it, like fully, because like it's like very extravagant in the mm-hmm. sense that like everything is like decorated, beautified. Like, is it marble, right? Is it made out of marble? I don't. I don't even know what it is. It's just bro, looks... the whole message is like gold. Yeah, the whole message is like gold. It's, the carpets are so nice inside it. Like. Uh, they really put their time into it. Very, very, very nice inside of Masjid. Mm-hmm. And you just feel at peace. And the crazy part is that the Prophet is <laughs> buried there with Abu Bakr and Umar. Wow, subhanAllah. You know, may Allah be pleased with them. Yeah, inside the Masjid is so, 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 so nice, bro. And once I actually got to pray inside it, it was a different feeling as well. And the thing is, though, once you're there, it's kind of like Mecca, where like you don't really know where the, the front of the Masjid is. It's like imagine like this huge place mm-hmm. and like wherever you pray, you're in the masjid. That looks like, like a shopping district, right? Like it's like a huge. There's there's a lot because I think there's a lot surrounding the masjid. Okay, there's yeah, a lot that's of like stores and stuff. Yeah. But and the hotels are like right there. Mm-hmm. So our hotel is like, bro, you come out of your hotel, it's like two minute walk. Wow. It's like walking from this side of the apartment to that one. And it was like super packed with traffic. No, it's the thing is, bro. There's you know how we we're talking about in Mecca like that we were walking like. Super fast. Mm-hmm. You know, the crazy mm-hmm. part is in Medina, it's the opposite. There's a Mecca walk, but in Medina, you walk as if like, bro, There's you no have time you have like running out. Time is not running. Yeah, time is just is just paused, mm-hmm. and you're just slowly taking your steps and just enjoying. Oh, it's just it's see just that peace, that peace. Yeah, and I'm talking about is just it's so peaceful. Every step that you're taking to the masjid, you're just like, bro, I'm really here, you know? Wow. And like, you're not in a rush because the masjid is right by the hotel. Mm-hmm. And we're like, bro, so, 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 so nice and peaceful. You start walking slower than the normal walk, you know? Wow. The whole masjid, the Nebui as a whole, is just so, so, so nice and beautiful. Mm-hmm. And they, they have Zamzam water there too. Wow. So you don't have to be in Mecca to have Zamzam, so the Zamzam's there too. And bro, I spent a lot of time there just reading Quran. Mm. Praying and Allah well, was nice. And him was him was the Mount Mount Uhud. Mount Uhud, yeah. bro. Mount Uhud was visiting Mount Uhud. Just gave me flashbacks of the Sira. Yeah, like, you know the uh, Ma'am. Wow, just, just, you know what I just realized? Because yeah. we have a picture in our eyes, like our own version of our imagination. You were there. I know how it looks. Wow, it looks, bro, it's, it's so sick. But what's it called? Um, actually, before, once we got into Medina, I remember I, it was dark, but then it was a huge mountain, right? And I asked the taxi driver, I'm like, which mountain is that? And he's like, this is Uhud. Wow. Bro, Uhud was so big. Did bro. you say, take me there, line? I'm like, because oh, no, it was pitch black. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> it was impossible. But I took in, like, even though it was it was dark, I could see how big Mount Uhud is was. Is that like the Banff Mountains? Yeah, but. That, bro, those are overwhelming. It's like it's like the Banff Mountains, but obviously it's like. Not um, as big. It's, it's like dirt. Yeah. You know, it's it's not it's not like the Banff Mountains are trees and forests. Yeah. yeah. So there it's just kinda like just like, like around that size? Bro, it's huge. Oh it's huge. The thing is, you know what's crazy about that too is like when you see it in person, Prophet Sallallahu he he said that we have a lot of love for Mount Uhud. And it's a mountain that loves us and we love it. Wow. So as a Muslim as well, you're supposed to have this love and and appreciation for Mount Uhud, mm-hmm. you know? And that's where the battle of Uhud took place. Yeah. Remember in the story of, of, of Uhud, there's like a little like hill that the Prophet ﷺ, he put archers there. Mm-hmm. And he said, no matter what, no matter how the battle is looking, you don't come down unless the Prophet ﷺ commands you to come down. Yeah. So their, their job was to stay there yeah. and to post. So they were not allowed to leave unless they were told by the Prophet, peace be upon him, to come mm-hmm. down. Mm-hmm. And the thing was, when the battle first started, you know, the nice thing was, uh, one of the students of Medina was narrating the story to us and showing us in real time, like, wow. it came from this side, it, bro, wow. it was crazy. So you got a tour. Just, 
a whole tour yeah you know so awesome. i was able to like actually visualize he's like imagine they came from this side and then the process of them had a group of people over here a group of people over there so you could actually like visualize how mm-hmm. it looked you know yeah uh, but basically the story goes that the the sahabas and the muslims were winning the battle so much so to the point where mushrikeen the people of mecca who came to attack the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the muslims were losing and then they were turning back and once they were turning back they were dropping you know like the, the 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 armor to, to be able to the move war faster. the war um the spoils of war yeah so they're dropping everything in order to escape yeah. so it looked like the muslims were victorious like they were about to win the battle so the people that were on the hill that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them not to move from they started feeling like hey we won the battle and then once they saw the 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 spoils of war and the people gathering it they're like we're going to miss out on that we need to go we need to go get our share oh, so they came down so so they were divided yeah they were divided so half of the people were like no we have to listen to the order of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the other half was like we won the battle mm-hmm. so when they decided to go down that's when khalid bin walid who at that point was not a muslim yet khalid bin walid the, was known as the sword of allah mm-hmm. he saw what was going on and then the one thing that was causing the mushrikeen problems the whole time was those archers yeah cuz thing is every time khalid khalid kept trying to get by them and it's like yo i can't get past these guys i yeah. can't get past these guys and then once he noticed that half of those guys left he's like this is our chance yeah so he came from and the reason why that spot was so important it was though that spot was covering the back of all the sahabas that their back is, was to Uhud. And then on one side, they were engaging the army. And on the other side, there was the that hill. Yeah. yeah. So now imagine, once Khalid saw that, that opportunity, he did a U-turn. He brought his troops back. And then they, they, they killed the remaining Muslims that were on the hill. Wow. So now, once that happened, Khalid came and started attacking the Muslims from behind. Yeah. So now the, the, the mushrikeen that were running away saw that Khalid was able to attack them and get by the archers so they turned back so what happened the Muslims were in the middle sandwich. or sandwich in the middle oh, man. then the Muslims were at a disadvantage mm-hmm. and you know that's that's where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he got hurt and it was almost to the point where like the Sahaba thought that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was killed and this is the mm-hmm. battle where Hamza anhu, his uncle was killed and all the Muslims that were killed in Uhud mm-hmm. so even when we were there we sent uh, salam to the people that, that you know the martyrs of Uhud mm-hmm. and wallahi bro it was just it was crazy just actually visualizing wow the importance of those archers because they disobeyed and they didn't listen to the command of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the result of that was the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam getting harmed and so many muslims getting killed oh. all because of disobeying an order from the prophet wow. peace be upon him but then wallahi bro uhud was it's being able to to see uhud and to visualize that whole war it was unreal mm-hmm. i like the way you explain the story a lot cuz i hear it a lot yeah. and i never get tired of hearing the story of the battle of uh, uhud yeah but it was it was in a different like hearing it and and, and seeing it and hearing it while seeing it is yeah. a whole different that's where experience. this happened and that's where that happened that yeah. yeah and you just put yourself in that position yeah, you know yeah and you're just kind of imagining it but now you get to actually see how it kind of looked like you know yeah how about how about quba well, how was that mishi quba yeah. mishi quba was I, i posted it i don't know if you saw but it's it's uh the mishi is like white mm-hmm. on the outside and like white like it's like pure 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 white mm-hmm. and masjid quba for those that don't know it's the first masjid that was established by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so imagine that's the first like for the muslims mm-hmm. it's the first house of worship mm-hmm. that was established by the prophet so obviously like that's a that's a big big thing the wow. first masjid the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a hadith he said that the one who purifies himself and goes to masjid quba and prays two rak'ahs you know what the reward of that is mm. we get the reward of umrah subhanallah so all you have to do is just come in a state of wudu mm. pray, pray two rak'ahs in quba and you get that the ajr of wow. umrah so we already did umrah 
and then three you times. This, again. Is, this, is, this is number four. Wow. <laughs> and you were able to do that how many times? Like once, right? I only I only did it one time. Okay. Because the Prophet saw, I said, them, uh, they said that he usually used to go on Saturdays. And he didn't so I didn't, I didn't go on Saturday because oh. that was the day that, uh, actually, was it? I'm trying to remember what happened on Saturday. But no, I didn't go on Saturday. But the Prophet saw, he, he, he used to go on Saturday. So that, that was from his sunnah. And I bro, yeah, it was, was nice being in Quba, actually seeing what a first established mosque wow. was. No piece of history. And not only is it a piece of history, so compared to what we said about Jabal and Nur, like where the Quran was first revealed, mm -hmm. mentioned that how there's no significance in terms of worship. Yeah. But in Quba, there's the hadith that whoever prays there gets the reward, the two rakahs gets the reward of Umrah. Wow. So there's actually something to gain from going to Quba. Mm -hmm. So we visited Mount Uhud, which is, you know, the scholars they said to go visit Mount Uhud because also to say, you know, uh, uh, salam to the, the martyrs the and, and those who passed in, in Uhud. Mm -hmm. And also it's a mountain that loves us and we love it. Mm -hmm. And so Masjid Quba, you get the reward of Umrah if you pray two rakahs in there. And uh, you enjoy seeing the first established. And actually seeing, yeah, the, yeah. it's like a piece of history. Yeah. Seeing Masjid Quba was nice. Um, and then we, we kind of drove past a couple other places. So we drove past where uh, Salman al-Farisi, he built the, the, the trench during yeah. the Battle of Ahzab. Mm -hmm. So we got to see, we didn't see the trench, but like we saw the area of like where it was, you know? Okay. And they, then, wouldn't like, they wouldn't like keep it there just for like... You know, I, I, we, there was something that was there, like part of it. But I don't know. I, I didn't really understand what it was. I don't know if it was okay. a trench or if it was just some construction going on. Oh, okay. But I, I doubt they would leave it there. Cause think about it. It's, it's a hazard. Why was why would they just have like a hole? Random hole, you know? yeah. Yeah. But um and then outside of that, what else was there that we went to visit? Um yeah, I think those are like the main places that you go see in uh, uh Medina. Medina. Oh. There's a couple other masajids that you can go visit. Like there's uh, Masjid Qiblatain that has like the two Qiblas. Yeah. Muslims are praying in that masjid and then they were told before they were facing uh, Masjid Al-Aqsa. That was a Qibla before Palestine. And I came down and then they were told to face Mecca. Oh, so okay. that's another masjid that's there. But we didn't, we didn't go inside it. Um, but yeah, Allah I just... Medina, Medina compared to Mecca, I would say like there's a lot more to see. In history. In history. Because mm -hmm. the Prophet Sallallahu when he was in Mecca, Muslims were being persecuted. Yeah. And the Muslims didn't really have much. But when he went to Medina, that's the city that he actually established. Mm -hmm. And that's the city that he chose you know, to spend his last days in. And wow. that's, that's his home. You know, even though when he left Mecca, he felt like all he knew was Mecca. And to the Prophet Sallallahu like imagine like your hometown that you loved mm -hmm. and that you had so much appreciation for kick you out, banish you to the mm -hmm. point where they're, where you're about to be killed and yeah. then you have to run away and escape. Yeah. And then you get embraced by a new city mm -hmm. where, you know, they showed love to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet had to, like, it wasn't all smooth. So like the, the Jews were living there, the Christians were living there. So there was a lot of building, po politics. a lot of building up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in the end, you know, alhamdulillah, now it is what it is. Yeah. And it's honestly, bro, the best city in the world. Wow. The best city in the world. I can confidently say said. that. I can confidently say that. Wow. But um, before we wrap up the story of Medina, I want to talk about two things. The last two things that I did before uh, leaving Medina. Mm -hmm. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's buried in Masjid al-Nabawi in the house of Aisha, okay. anha. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would just come out of the house and be in the Masjid al-Nabawi. Okay. So obviously Masjid al-Nabawi now is expanded, like it's so big. Mm -hmm. But at the time, it, it probably was not that size. Yeah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to just come out of the house and he used to be in the Masjid. So between the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is mm -hmm. Aisha's house, and the Mimbar, it is said that it is Rodatan min Riyad al-Jannah. So it's called the Roda, and it's a garden from the gardens of paradise. Wow. You can imagine the significance of being in that place, mm -hmm. right? So 
when people come to Masjid al Nabawi, what they do is they pray in the Masjid, and then they do ziyara, which is saying salam to the Prophet So you get you come by, and you say salam to the Prophet mm-hmm. and Abu Bakr and Umar are buried right beside him. Mm-hmm. So then you say salam to Abu Bakr, you say salam to Umar, and you go. But normally, what you try to do is there's a there's a booking system that they have for praying in the Rauda. Mm-hmm. Before we even got to Medina, booking the Rauda was fully booked for the whole month. Mm-hmm. Once we got there, I attempted to go to the Rauda without the 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 booking on the app. Okay. But the difference was there's actually a lineup for that, and there's no way they're letting you in without the the really. The booking, yeah. So once I tried to line up, and then the thing was, even the lineup takes like almost two hours to get there. And I've mm-hmm. tried at different times of the day. And there's a time where they open it for the women, and there's a time where they open it for the men. For the women, like the way the way it happened, like for my mom, imagine like she said she was praying in the masjid, she prayed Isha. And then as soon as the Isha ended, in front of where they prayed, they just opened it up. She, you know, she's just like, oh, I wonder like, where, why they're opening this up. And then they started walking, and then they ended up in the Rauda. Wow. So they went there, they, they prayed in the Rauda, they prayed two rakahs, and then they left. My mom was telling me that women are like very loud and rowdy. Yeah. So even though my mom and them were praying there, they just felt like everyone was yelling, everyone was going crazy. Even though they're in, you know, like a peaceful place where you're yeah. supposed to, you know, just be, be calm. But the thing is... The, the For the men, there's a lineup, right? Yeah. So because of that lineup, I feel like maybe it's a little bit more under control. Whereas like for the women, they just open it. Yeah. And then they all just like storm in. Oh, and everyone's okay. just trying to pray. Makes sense. Yeah. But then once my mom went in, I was like, because I try to go, and I got okay. body. <laughs> I got body several times. And then she told me, she's like, oh, we were able to get in. So then after she got in, I made it my mission that like I have to find a way to get in. And well, like most of the people that we were with, we're unfortunately not able to go to the Rauda. Mm-hmm. So I went, I tried to attempt it three times. The first time, I didn't know which line I was supposed to be on. Mm-hmm. So by accident, I followed like the regular line. And that line was just going to say salam to the Prophet Wasallam, but from far. Oh. So I'm like, ah, oh, that's not where you're supposed to go. So then I came, I had to go back around the whole masjid. And then I tried to come back again. Second time I came around and then I started talking to the guard. I tried to, I tried to ask him, I'm like, oh, can you let me in this way? Because I basically that that side was a little bit closer to the Roda. Mm-hmm. So think about it as like I'm not I'm the lineup to go into the Roda, you need to show an app. So me, I'm trying to get in from the inside, yeah. from the back. But there's a guard that's there and not letting anyone get by. Yeah. So he was like, No, you can't get in, you can't get in. And then eventually he just he let me and a couple people through. Like just yeah. randomly saying, no, fine, come. Yeah, we're talking to him. I'm like, you know, I came from Canada. I'm only, you know, I'm only here for like two more days, you know, and the, the app is full. I want to just go, just, you know, I, I was pretty much was just asking him in, in a nice way. And some other people were asking him as well. Mm-hmm. And he just let a couple of us in and then he closed it. So I thought at that point that that was Roda. But no, that's just the area where you're right beside the Prophet is. Mm. So even then, so imagine the first time that I went by and I said salam to the Prophet, it happened like too quick. Mm-hmm. So like I wasn't able to truly process that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was buried right there. Wow. Which is crazy. Like this is our, our beloved Prophet, our beloved messenger. Mm-hmm. Peace be upon yeah, him. He was right there. And he was right there, you know? So the second time that I came around, I was like, you know what? I'm going to send, you know, salam, peace and salam to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And actually like really take it in. Mm-hmm. But the thing was, again, that my, my mission was I'm trying to get into the Rauda. Yeah. Rodan. So look at it as like there's it's like a straight line and then the road is to the left. And to the left, there's two entrances and there's a guard on each side. Mm-hmm. So I'm asking the guard, I'm like, yo, can you let me in, please? And he's like, no, I can't. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And then I'm like, you know what, let me try to, let me try to sweet talk him. Let me see if I can get in. And then in the end, he told me something. He, he pointed to like a camera and he's like, they're watching us. If I let you in, I'll be in big trouble. Um, so that's when I realized I'm like man so it's it's more than just them allowing people and the thing is I saw from the time I was there the whole time they never let anyone in wow 
And I, so so then after fun. that, I walked by, and then uh, again, I said salam to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but this time I was like right in front of him, like where the, that gate, yeah, where him and Abu Bakr and Umar are buried. And you know, I really, you know, so I said my salam to all three of them, and then I kept it pushing. The thing is, a lot of people do all sorts of bid'ah. Like some people, they, people ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Make dua for to actually do something. Yeah, they make dua yeah. to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because they believe that he can do something for them. Yeah. But the only one that you're supposed to ask is Allah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Ta and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can't do nothing for you. Abu Bakr can't do nothing. Umar can't do nothing. Mm -hmm. anhu. No Imam is able to do anything for you. Mm -hmm. so, and why ask people that have passed away when you can directly ask Allah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? And that's the whole point of Tawheed, mm -hmm. that you have that connection between you and Allah yeah. directly. And uh, so now the, the, the second time, so I realized I'm like, okay, there's actually no getting in from this side. Mm -hmm. So I tried to do it one, a third time. And the third time that I did it, right when I got into, uh, remember how I told you like there's a, there's, so there's a spot, like the outside spot where you say salam to him and then the, the closest spot, right? So again, I'm trying to get into the closest spot. Okay. But now there's a different guard that's there. And we'll lie, bro. I don't even know how to say this. But the energy that that guard had before I even got there was like, I could just tell it was not going to go, yeah. go well. So I come close to him and like, this guy was just not, it was, he wasn't even looking at me. Okay. So imagine he's just like, like looking to the side, right? And I'm trying to talk to him. I said, Assalamu alaikum. Like, you know, all of them, I try to greet them, just, yeah. salam, just you know, before I even say anything, you know, I just want to. I said, Assalamu alaikum, how are you? This, that, you know? I said, Assalamu alaikum to him. This guy does not even respond to my salam. That's crazy. Just looks at me. He's like, yo, keep it moving. Damn. Keep it moving. I'm like, oh, I just, no, nah, he, he didn't want to hear it. He's just like, no, keep it moving. Keep it moving. And wallahi, bro, it honestly felt like, <laughs> I don't even want to say this, you know, because this was in the Prophet's ministry, the right beside yeah. Where he sallallahu alayhi wasallam yeah. was buried, but bro, well, I felt like it was Shaitan himself that was stopping me from entering. Wow. It was, I don't know, man. It was just something about him, and and like even like, I was kind of cheesed because I'm like, yo, I'm smelling like like cigarettes off of him, and he's in like the most nice, beautiful yeah. place. And then I'm like, yo, man, this guy's he's really not gonna let me, you know. And then someone else came and said, yeah, salam alaikum, and he said, alaikum salam to them. Okay. And that's when I clocked. I'm like, uh, this king called thing. This guy, I don't know. Yeah, the guy who that he salamed was was Arab. Yeah. So I was low key like, I, right, you know, let me keep it moving. Now imagine I did that three times, and that happened probably in the span of like hour and a half. Because every time I get turned back, I have to loop back all the way around. It's like a big loop, know? huh? Yeah, and and I'm trying to talk to people. I'm trying. I'm trying to get my way in. So then after the third time, I was just like, man, you know, like. Wallahi, bro, I don't think I've ever felt that level of heartbreak in my life, bro. I walked mm -hmm. back, heartbroken. And and the thing was, I was, there was only one more day that mm -hmm. I had in Medina. And then it really hit me. And I'm like, okay, uh, you I just... guess I'm not going to get to go to the Roda. And even though mm -hmm. like, not going there is not, not the worst. Like, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like it was something I really wanted to do. So I'm walking back, heartbroken. Lie, bro, and I swear, bro, the pain is not something that like I was used to. And you know, started like I started feeling like a little bit like emotional. And I'm just walking back, and I'm just like, like I I feel like Shaitan got to me at a point too, where I was just like, you know what, maybe, maybe I was not worthy to go. You know, that's uh -huh. the thoughts that started mm -hmm. creeping up in my head. Because my my brother told me a story that he ended up going him and Ismail. Yeah. So he got to see that old, and my mom got to see that old, and I'm like, man, it's just me. Damn. Like, it's just me. I, I didn't see it. But at the same time, I was like, Alhamdulillah, you know? Like, if it's not rain for me, it's not rain for me. Like, yeah. It's not the craziest thing, but I still felt hurt. Especially, I think, the way that last guard was reacting towards me. Yeah. You know? It honestly made me feel like, I felt like I didn't belong, you know? Yeah. So then I get back to the hotel. I took a shower. And, you know, I was like, no, it is what it is. <laughs> and then, uh, so the next morning, Got up, got my breakfast. After that, I was going to go shop a little bit for uh, Amar. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to get him a couple of things for his uh, upcoming nikah. 
So after we had breakfast, Bilal was going to go back to sleep. But, he's, but I told him, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm trying to go grab a couple of things. And he's like, how long are you going to be out? I said, probably like an hour and a half max. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go with you. So me and him went to some of the stores. The prices they were giving us was outrageous. So then I'm like, you know what? I'm, let's actually go to another place. This place is probably expensive because it's right beside the mist. Yeah. We were told, go to this area. There's a lot of shopping areas in there. So we ended up walking, walking in the heat for like 20 minutes. And once we got there, that mall was actually shut down. Wow. So apparently that mall hasn't even been there for a long time now. Mm -hmm. So then we're like, okay, let's just hop on a taxi and we'll go to like, we'll go somewhere far. And once we, 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 we flagged the taxi down and it ended up being a Yemeni guy. And then we told him, we want to go to this one mall. We're looking for this. And he's like, oh, if you're looking for a thobe, why don't you go to the actual factories? So basically he's like, he's like basically like, if you're looking for a Nike, why are you going to go? Why are you going to go to sport check yeah. and go to Nike? Yeah. So he's like, yo, let's actually go to these stores. He's like, check where they are on the map. So I looked, I'm like, it's like seven, eight minutes away. So we ended up going there. And then the guy's like, yo, you know what? I'll go with you guys. So I'll get you guys nice deals. The taxi cab, you know, he comes out. He's, he's basically shopping with us at this mm -hmm. one. And then we go from one store to another. And it's taken a little bit of time. And low-key, I was like... You feel bad for him? I felt bad for him. Yeah. And also... But he was like, he, he, he was like, no, nah, don't worry, don't worry. I got you guys. Mm -hmm. And I uh, started feeling bad. And I felt like, you know, I was there for too long. And even Bilal and Huda weren't really looking for the stuff that I was looking for. Yeah. So we ended up taking a long time. And then I ended up finding a, a white thobe for him. Mm -hmm. Then now we're, we're heading back to Mr. the Nabui. And then he dropped us off at this one spot where he's like, it's uh, easy access to the masjid. And at the same time, you get to see where after the Prophet ﷺ passed away, it's like the area where they, they gave him their uh, Pledge of Allegiance as the leader of the Muslims. Mm -hmm. So he saw that. As we were walking back, I told Bilal, I'm like, yo, you want to attempt that all the one more time? You're crazy. <laughs> Bro, even though I was heartbroken, I'm like, there has to be a way. You know, I'm like, yeah. you want to attempt that all the one more time? And he's like, I ah, think it's going to work. Because the thing is, after Duhur, that's when the Roda opens up for the men. Mm -hmm. So before Duhur is for the women. So I'm like, yo, you want to attempt it? And he's like, ah, you know what, let's do it. So, and, and all the bags that I had, I gave them to Huda. And she's like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take it up for you. And then I, I didn't have wudu, made wudu outside. And then we ended up going to, I'm like, yo, let's go to where, let's go to the entrance, the door of where the road is. Okay. So that's like near the place where people line up. So imagine we walked through, and instead of going around this time, we walked through the masjid. Mm -hmm. So once we stepped out, we were at the gate closest to the Rolda. So the Rolda was to our right. So once we got out, let me bring you back a little bit. So the way Abdul Shukur and Ismail at one time in Ramadan, they were able to get to the Rolda was they were let in by a guy who works there. Okay. okay. There's certain guys that are certified. And what they wear is they wear a white thobe and then they have a little badge here on the left side. They wear the traditional Saudi imama with the with the, you know that black head thing yeah so imagine so he told me that a guy that looked like that let him in so imagine when we walked out of the gate we just see a guy that's just standing the there so he's he he has his arms out like this and he has his shades if i could describe it no homo he just looked like a fresh like <laughs> looked like a, he looked good you know yeah <laughs> he looked good so we saw him and i noticed that he had that little badge thing so now i looked at bills and i'm like yo should I talk to him? Yeah. And then he's like, ah. he's like, I don't know. I'm like, bro, this is this is our last our last opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna do it. So uh, I went up to him, and I didn't want to speak to him in Arabic. So I was like, oh, salam alaikum. I was like, have him Englishy. Told him like, do you understand English a little bit? And he's like, oh yeah, I kind of understand it. Mm -hmm. So now at this point, I made him see that we're foreigners, basically. Yeah. So now I'm like, I told him, I'm like, hey, you know, we came from all the way from Canada. It's our first time in Medina. And I'm like, yo, the, the app has been booked. And all we want to do is see the Roda. I'm like, and we've been trying and we've kept being turned away. I'm like, yo, is there any way we can get in? Mm. And then he looked at us and he's like, he looked, he looked, he looked around him and he's like, just you two. Uh, yeah. that, that's what I saw that's a, a big smile yeah, yeah. oh, and I'm like yeah just us two and he's like okay 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 he's like you know what he's like just wait here 
we're going to try to go at Duhr time. So I'm like, uh, so I was like, oh, okay. I'm like, so you want us to pray Duhr and then go with you? He's like, no, 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 no. We're going to go at Duhr time. Okay. So he's trying to say we're going to pray Duhr in the Rodah. Wow. So instead of praying two rakahs, he's like, we're going to pray Duhr there. So then me, me and Bilal were like, so he's like, just post. We're going to wait till close to the Adan of Duhr. Mm-hmm. So me, so I look at Bilal. And then we kind of just back up, back up a little bit, and we go, we go, uh, kind of go inside the masjid to be a little bit far away from him. You so know, it's like, not not like that, like so. It's not he begs. So now me and me and Bilal are just looking at each other, and we're just like, yo, I don't want to get too excited. I don't want to get too excited because they're like, yo, we're not in there yet, and we don't know if we're gonna get in. So we're just like, man, this is really happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not gonna get my hopes up. I'm not getting my hopes up, especially after being disappointed those three times, and I was like yeah. heartbroken. And then other people are going up to him and then they're asking him questions like, oh, where's the, where's the Rolda? And he's like, oh, it's right there. You have to walk. You have to line so up there. Yeah. The thing was, we asked him to actually help us. Yeah. Those people were asking him like, oh, where is it? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Then uh, a little bit before the Adhan goes off, he's just like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Mm-hmm. Well, so this guy starts walking and we're walking behind him and we're like, yo, is this really happening? And he's like, yo, when, once we get to the guard, he's like, don't talk to them. I'm going to talk to them. Okay. So we're just walking, we're like VIP, you know. And once we get to the guard, he's about to stop us, and he's like, "Are they with you?" And he's like, "Yeah, they're with me." Wow. So we go from behind the guard, and we're walking, we're walking in line. Me, I have my head down. Bill's is looking around, and he's like, "Yo, everyone's grilling us. Everyone's wow. like, Yo, who are these guys? Where are they going?' You know." So imagine a place that people line up, and it's impossible to get in. You know? They wait for like two, three hours just to get. Turned down, we're getting like, you know, escorted. It, it, we're getting escorted yeah. there. Yeah. So imagine we're going, we're going. I'm just like, yo, I actually can't believe it's happening. So we we get in, and he's like, yo, just take off your shoes. So we take off our shoes, and we get inside the masjid, and we get to the rolda. The rolda has a different carpet. It looks different, and that's where like the. The, the member of the Prophet ﷺ was, and it's right beside the grave of the Prophet. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, that's, his house is right there, and it's from the house to the, to the member. As soon as we walk in, Allah, bro, honestly, I don't think I've felt more peace in my life. Wow. The most peaceful place I've ever been in. And we, we and all, imagine all that you hear in there was birds chirping. Wow. All you just hear is just the sound of birds. And Allah, bro, I'm just looking around and I'm like, yeah, I'm really here. And I see the Prophet Sallallahu is buried right in front of oh, him. Wow. And Abu Bakr and Umar are right there. So we're really taking it. We're like, yo, we actually are in here. And then uh, the guy tells us, he's like, yo, put your, put your shoes in a bag. And then he, he asked, uh, he told us to go get a bag from the cleaners. He's like, you are not supposed to put our shoes down. Anywhere, like even though normally, like you could just kind of put them side by side, but it's, this is a roll day, you know, like mm-hmm. it's a special place. Like put it in a bag. Mm-hmm. So we try to ask the cleaners for a bag, and then, and then they're like, "Nah, we're using it. We're using it. They're pucking us." And then Scott look, he's like, "Yo, give them a bag." <laughs> wow, <laughs> they grabbed the bag and gave it to us. So we put our stuff in there, and then they gave us uh, the Zemzem water in a bottle. Mm-hmm. That was some special Zemzem water, bro. Because normally the Zemzem is just in like a big jug. Mm-hmm. And then you just pour it yourself, bro. We had specific like yeah, wow. Zemzem water bottle. And I'm like, yo, I'm keeping this bottle forever, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I was, I'm like, yo, we're in the Rolda. And Alhamdulillah, like my mom, her experience of the Rolda was like, it was, you know, it was crowded. People were, were loud. So that she didn't really get to feel fully at ease. And me, I'm in there. And Empty, yeah? They closed it, and only the people that were there before, like the people that entered before they closed it, were the only people praying in the Mm Rolda. And also, you know what we found out? That's where the imam leads the prayer. Wow. So we're actually praying right behind the imam. Wow. In the Rolda, the garden of paradise on earth, beside the Prophet ﷺ. SubhanAllah. And now it's just like, we prayed for the, the four raka'ahs of sunnah before Duhr, and then we prayed Duhr there. Then we prayed the two raka'ahs after. And wallahi, bro, it was probably 20 minutes, but honestly, it felt like I was there for two hours, bro. Wow. SubhanAllah, wallahi, that experience was so beautiful. It was honestly, the, I can't explain that feeling 
where it, I was just overwhelmed with like happiness and just knowing that I, I actually, you know, I was, I was able to get in and not only was I able to pray, because I was, I was making a lot of dua, mm-hmm. asking a lot to get a chance to pray in the Rauda, and I still believe that I was going to get a chance. Mm-hmm. And not only did I pray two rakahs there, I prayed four rakahs before, mm-hmm. two rakahs after, wow. four rakahs at doors. I prayed ten rakahs in there. Wow. And I was able to make dua. Was, and it was actually very, very peaceful. And the whole prayer, imagine you're just praying. And it's a silent prayer too. Mm-hmm. All you just hear is the birds. Wow. I, will, I honestly felt like you're in like a piece of Jannah. Mm-hmm. And, and reading that tahiyat, and I get to the part where you say, Assalamu alaikum ayyuha nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Where you say salam to the Prophet, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he's right there. Wow. Bro. He's right there. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That experience was just surreal, bro. I still, I still can't believe that I was there, you know? Mm-hmm. And so we ended up, so as soon as we left the Rauda, it just felt like my time, like I accomplished my mission. Yeah. I did what I came here to do. It. This was my last day in Medina. Yeah. I was so happy, bro. I was so happy. So this, this was like the last like full day that I had in Medina. And Allah, bro, that guy, may Allah reward oh, him. Wow. Beautiful inside and out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, Allah, bro, he just life saving. After after we finished, bro, I gave him the biggest hug, and I'm like, Jazakallah khair, you know. And he's like, and I was making so much dua for him. I was making dua for him in the prayer, yeah, outside of the prayer. And then he's just like, and then he Allah, he gave us a big hug, you know, give us a lot of kisses. And then he's like, oh, I don't ask for anything, just make dua for me. And I say, like, I made bare dua for you, and I'm gonna continue making dua for wow. you. Wow, you know, he was a. Uh, uh, some of the Allah sent for us, yeah. you know, in order to get what we wanted That's to do. Nice, yeah, yeah. And so that was like the last full day that we had in Medina. The way we ended it off, Medi- the way we ended off Medina, was until now I haven't been to the Baqiyah, which, which is a graveyard of the Muslims, mm-hmm. where most of the Sahabas are buried. The Muslims who pass away can also get buried there. Mm-hmm. So every day, there's so you know how like there's a janazah. All the time in Mecca, there's also janazas every time in Medina. Mm-hmm. And they get buried in the Baqiyah. And the Prophet wasallam, he said that if you were to die, try to die in Medina. For I will be, I will intercede for anyone who dies in Medina. Wow. So those people who are buried in the same place as the companions, the Prophet wasallam, will intercede for them. It's a, it's a big blessing to have. Mm-hmm. You know, so imagine after Fajr, we're just like, yo, we have to go to the Baqiyah. So it was me, Ismail, and Bilal. We have to go to the Baqiyah before we leave. We're leaving at 9 a.m. that day. Okay. So we go, we pray Fajr as close as possible to the exit where they, they uh, take the bodies. Because as soon as the prayer is done, they run. Mm-hmm. So as soon as the prayer ended, we grabbed our stuff. We went as fast as we could. And we saw the burial. We followed it. and. And when you're following the burial, it's good to help carry the body to uh, where they're being buried. So we were running after it, and I was able to find like a nice spot to grab it from. Mm-hmm. And I was there with Bilal and Ismail, and we're all running. And imagine like it's pitch black, and we're running, and there's the sidewalk that we're running on is very tight. And imagine mm-hmm. so much people, everyone's trying to grab that thing. Yeah. So imagine you're running with it, and people are like kind of dropping off. Because oh the minute we, we go to a spot where it's like it's too tight, your foot is gonna is gonna slip up and you're gonna you're gonna fall out of it. Mm-hmm. You're gonna fall out of the the, the sidewalk. So me, yeah, well, I, tra- I found a nice spot and I was holding on to it as much as possible. The crazy part was I didn't notice that Ismail and Bilal like fell back. Damn. It also me, yeah, I was just running, I'm running, I'm running. And then I didn't notice till I got to the end. Cause imagine it's like the right after Fidger. So it was very dark. And once we got to the place where they were burying the body, I look back and Ismail and Bilal are not there. Wow. But then I realized that it wasn't the only person who, it wasn't the only body that was getting buried that day. Once I got back with them later on, they told me that there was a lot of different bodies. Mm-hmm. So we ended up just following a different one. So the one that I went to go see ended up being a grandfather who was like 70 something. It was a, uh, 
And I saw it was a bunch of little kids that were there, like seven, eight, ten. And then I don't know if it was his grandkids, but there was it was little kids that were there, uh, like some teenagers, some some of the fathers. So it was his whole his whole probably lineage was there, you know, wow. all there to pray on him and got the opportunity to be buried in the Bukhya. Mm-hmm. Allah was very emotional, you know, like we helped bury, throw the sand in. And Allah, bro, it was just, it was such a strong way to end my time in Medina. Mm-hmm. Because the day before, I experienced the best day, the yep. joy of being in the Rada, mm-hmm. praying, you know, near the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then the next day, I'm going through a burial. And someone's being buried and making dua for them. And it just goes to show you how, like, Life can be so joyful one day, mm-hmm. and then the next day, you're full of sadness. Because we're not supposed to experience this happiness except in Jannah. Yeah. That's the only place where we're going to feel that joy. So I was seeing, you know, these, these young little boys, seven, eight years old, crying. And, you know, we're all emotional, making dua. Or, you know, the grandfather, who, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, it was, it's beautiful to, Pass to be buried there, you know, in, in Medina, in the Baqiyah, where the companions are buried there. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, no, it just reminded me that life was short. Yeah. So this, despite this joy and this happiness that I felt throughout this whole trip in Mecca and Medina, I was reminded that the final destination is, you know, that same grave mm-hmm. that all of us are going to be buried under. Yeah. And then the eye that kept replaying in my head is a verse where Allah, He says, مِنْهَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ that from there we created you from dirt. And on there you will return. And that you will be raised out from there again on mm-hmm. the day of judgment. And Wallahi, it just put me in a state where I'm like, you know what? There's not much to this life. Yeah. And that we are created from dirt and we're going to go back to dirt. And we're going to be resurrected, brought to account by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm-hmm. Now, Allah, it was a wake-up call and it was a reminder for me. And after that, you know, that walk back, walking through the graveyard of where the sahabas are buried, you know, I was just repeating, when you when you go to the graveyard, there's a dua that the Prophet sallallahu told us to say. You say, As-salamu alaykum ahl al-diyar min al-mu'mineen wa al-muslimin. That you say salam to, you know, the people of the graveyard. Mm-hmm. From the believers, the Muslims. And that we will soon be following you. Okay. That we will be next. Mm-hmm. Just knowing that I'm in the presence of, you know, the companions that, you know, helped spread this deen, this beautiful deen of Islam that I have. And that reached that whole world. Wow. And just being grateful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose me to be a Muslim. Mm-hmm. And wallahi, it was just, that was like my final moment in Medina, going to, going to the Baqiyah. And wallahi, it was, it was a surreal experience. And after that, you know, went to go grab breakfast, said salam to my brother. <laughs> and uh, Allah, I just... And you know, even that interaction that I had with Abdul Shakur bro, was so so beautiful. But one thing about Abdul Shakur, he's gonna give you your flowers. Mm-hmm. And Allah, I mean, I'm not a guy who I don't usually cry or get emotional, you know. But Allah, what? You know, he gave me a big hug, and uh, he was just giving me my flowers. Mm-hmm. And he was just telling me stuff, and honestly, made me made me emotional. I'm not someone that that hmm. that gets emotional or decides to cry. But Allah, it just it hit me, you know. It's my younger bro. Yeah. You know, Shukran has a big heart, Allah. Has a big heart. He knows, he knows how to use his the words. The right you things know? to say, yeah, he always. Knows the right things to say, Allah. Yeah, and that was my last moment with, with him and being in Medina. Allah, it was, it was for extreme sadness, you know, leaving Medina. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Allah, that's, that's my favorite city in the world, man. Wow. Favorite city in the world. And Beautiful. I hope, you know, to, to be back there every year, inshallah. Inshallah. Many, many times. After all these stories and the pictures you painted, I definitely need to visit Medina ASAP. Mm-hmm. I always wanted to go, but now you're kind of like shortening the time. Inshallah, yeah. I need to start planning my way through. 
Yeah, um, spend, spend more days than I did there. Six days is not enough. Yeah, clearly. So I hope everybody enjoys the, the stories, the visuals, and the meaning behind like your experience. And I personally enjoyed it. It was yeah. very, I have a picture in my head, but I have to see it for myself. Yeah, you do. You do. And yeah, experience the beauty of it. We're going to wrap it up. Yes, sir. And end it off with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.